What's it like for you guys working together in the studio? I mean, what's, what's your role? Because up until this point, we've kind of been talking to like individual artists and everyone says, you know, this is how I work, this is how I do things, but how is it different working as a duo? To be sincere, <laughs> like he's, he's, like he's a studio uh, magenic, studio, re or studio retard and the studio whiskey, and I'm the guy who is pulling him back to stay focused. <laughs> That's how it is. And we really would like to, uh, to show us and also tell a little bit so how, we, how we, our workflow goes and uh, how we create music and thinking outside of the box. Also, it's still like, um, it's still hard work, you know, but uh, sometimes also you have a bitch fight when you're with the two of you, you know, like you always have different opinions. And also beside of that, we, we're trying to, to uh, stimulate and motivate the people here that live on an island, the new talents, to create and start making their own music instead of uh, copycatting. That's, that's also the main point of us. But you were making music individually before you met, right? So, That's right. right yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so how is the process different now? The process is different. Uh, Gabriel will give the answer. Oh, can I? Thank you. No, like, um, I've been working as a full-time producer for 14 years, and when you're alone, you kind of get stuck in a loop, you know? So you think you have found the shit, but then you hear it like 50 times because you're trying to get the mix right, and then you kind of think it's dull. And I know a lot of producers think like, okay, let's search for another melody. When you're with two people and you both have the energy like, whoa, this is it. Then you can kind of like let it go in your head and go on to the next stage of arranging and, and like finishing the track. Cause you actually feel like, okay, somebody else loves it too. Cause you get the energy from it. You Definitely. Know? And I think that's a, that's a really good point because a lot of the time you second guess yourself when you're in the studio alone. Exactly. Everybody's insecure, you know? And you don't have anyone to go, it's fine, just move on. It sounds great. Yeah, so if Steve says like, fuck yeah, this is the, this is the shit, you know, then I know, okay, this is the shit, we're gonna finish the track. And it makes it way easier than being by yourself and uh, kind of lose yourself in the depth of, of, of creating music. So also everybody that is alone, I would say like, if you get to the point, just leave it for a day, come back. Because then you come with a fresh mind, fresh state of mind. And if you still think like, oh, that's actually pretty good. You know, we have tracks for, sometimes we actually get stuck. We leave it and then a month later we're like, oh yeah, we have that thing. We start it and it's either hit or shit. You know, so we love it or we hate it. If we hate it, we just leave it for another year. And then we'll see you again. Yeah. And that's also like if you're alone, it's better sometimes just when you get stuck, leave it, you know? So, yeah, well, I mean, I guess working together also helps you be more, you take more risks because you're allowing each other to do so. Exactly. So, maybe we could start with introducing what you're going to show us today and how this came together. Yeah, the, the, yeah. You could I do think it? that's a good thing and let's go. The thing we, the thing we want to do, because uh, there's been a, a lot of talking today, and uh, which is great because you, you learn a lot like of technical stuff. Uh, the important thing of making music is that you don't get stuck in the technical stuff. You have to go in with a mindset that you're open, you're like a baby on a playground. Everything should be new each time you go into the studio. You know, so uh, with that openness, there's a lot of tutorials how you can mix your bass into your kick and your kick into your bass and, and how you copy the lead of, of the gecko sound who everybody wants to copy now but the mindset there's no tutorial for that you know you should go in and feel free to experiment mistake make mistakes make a lot of mistakes because you're going to learn a shitload you know that's what you want to do to give you a good example when it's one of our best selling tracks we've gone a little deeper now but uh, to give an example i was watching glee which is like, maybe you know, it's like a show about the, Jesus Christ, it's a, a group in school that sings a cappella. It's like the gay show ever and I loved it, you know, but I was looking, <laughs> I was watching it and nobody could sing of the actors and I can't sing either. So I was thinking like, well, that I can do too, 
I have the technique in my head. So I stopped the show, I went to the studio, and basically made uh, synthesizers of my own voice. And to show you like where you can get your inspiration, because it's actually funny, if you have an open mindset in the studio, you also have an open mindset in the end outside of the studio. So you're gonna get your inspiration from everything. And if you're watching, for example, the show, like in my uh, case, it was the show Glee, I got my inspiration for our best-selling track uh, in this. And you can laugh all you want, it's fine. <laughs> That's it, like more that you don't have to hear because it's awful. Because when they start singing, it's all out of tune, and everybody can sing on out of tune. But the thing is, like, they made the, the musical part also with their voices, which gave me the idea okay, like in house as well, you have your bass line, you have your melody. Why don't I try, like, to grab a kick and a hi hat and a clap? Like, that's the basis of your beats, everybody knows that. But fill in all the blanks with only my voice. So went into the studio. I made a like a really simple setup. First, I put in a hi hat just to get the count because I don't like the click of Logic. It's way too hard. Then I put in with the simple sound. I put in like every note as far as I thought I could sing, and just put it in standard bars. You know, if you put the hi hat on. And it just goes up until like until there. And I started singing over it. And it actually sounds like this. Cover your ears. Da, 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 da. And the higher I get, the more false I'm gonna sound, you know? You can even hear it. Da. It's awful. But I thank like God it. for out tune, thank you. Maybe I should have made a track <laughs> without. In the end, like like if you're really into it, I muted too. <laughs> Cause I went like totally off. I had something to drink too, because I didn't mind that. <laughs> you know? But the thing is we have out tune. We have the technique. And if you have the technique in your back, you can fix stuff. You can fix stuff to make your own sounds. So first what I did, I recorded like every note, you know? Then I cut every note into parts I could put uh, on every channel. Like uh, you have an octave, an octave have 12 notes, then you go to another octave, the same 12 notes. So I made 12 tracks, put the, as you can see, like the C, C's, D, uh, D's, E, F, G, go on. Second octave starts here, third octave starts here. And I put uh, the pitch correction on it. For the C, I only put in the C, it bypassed uh, every other. If you then start it, and I go here, put everything on, it sounds a lot better, trust me. And so on. If you go to the second octave, it still takes the C only where it's needed. Da, da, da. I recorded that, like I made a single file of it, cut it up and put it in a sampler in Logic. Then you have basically like, uh, let me see, here. <laughs> let me get the LFO off. Open it up. Da, 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 da. Then you have a whole new sound which nobody has, because it's my voice, you know? And da, da. you can go as low as you go, and at the note where I got completely false, I just made the zone wider, so the sample gets shorter, but if, like, maybe you don't play that note, and if you do, it's just 
just should be a short one, you know? It actually goes to, to there. And this sounds very unnatural. But fuck it. If it sounds unnatural, don't play there. Just keep the part that is natural. Find your notes. That one doesn't sound good. Don't play it then. And with limiting yourself in what you have, you actually boost your creativity, you know? Because I know, like, I shouldn't play this. I'm way too lazy to record this over. Because I do it in one take, it needs to be quick. So I play it one octave lower. And you can put on filters and everything on it. Uh, for example, if you filter it, it then turns into like a really thick bass line. And you can make every sound of it, actually. You can make a lot of synthesizers of it. I did this in like a da and a bum and, and a really long a, as long as I could breathe, basically. And then I started to make the track. And then um, in the end, we got to this. Mind you, like only the, the drums are like samples. The rest is all my voice. Even the ooh, ooh, that's also like my voice with a filter with a really short envelope. Very simple this. And then it builds up with another voice. And I thought I put in some real claps because it was just like going live. So. And then we had a new thing, you know? And people really enjoyed it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's amazing the fact that came from Glee, but uh, I just love the idea that, you know, people really <laughs> respond to the human voice in general. Exactly. Yeah. It's the most natural thing you, you have. And basically, there's so many singers, so many different styles of voices. It's actually every instrument. So if you, with the technique nowadays, you can make your own voice Every instrument, you can make it the bass, you can make it the high, you can even like, if you can do like, you have a hi-hat. You can make it sound more like a hi-hat through technique. Use technique as, a, as your help. Never let technique be your leading, uh, how do you say that in English? Yeah, it's like, I mean, that's really good advice. Just don't let the technique take over. The idea is the most important Exactly. Part. Also when, for example, we start in the studio, we don't give a shit about the kick. What? For, like, for the beginning, no. Like, if you go to the club and you hear a fucking good song, would you go to your friend and say, like, I love this track, it goes like... Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, maybe, okay, well, we got the wrong uh, presentation then. But, like, there is no soul in the kick. The kick gives you, like, energy. So it's, it supports the whole arrangement and the whole vibe. So we just take a kick within seven minutes, like, okay, we'll take this kick. And then you build your music around it. Later you can say, like, okay, well, the kick doesn't push it enough. So let's find another kick. The kick is the easiest part to find because there's a million sample packages, you know. It's all about getting the vibe in melodies because people remember that. Absolutely. I mean, is that something you'd recommend then? You know, a lot of people, they start with a kick get it sounded a certain way, move on, add a hi-hat and a bass line and stuff. Would you recommend just forget the intro, go for like the main part of the track first and work back from that? No, we recommend just bend the rules. And there is no, there's no beginning or no end. Just make, make whatever you feel so happy and just start with a melody or start with, with a sweep, whatever you, you don't come up with. And then after that, build on a kick or a beat because that's the easiest part. That's what, that's what we think. Yeah, for sure. Of course, and if you have a good hook or a good loop, 
take it and, and build from there. But it's easier it's easier to build a, build a beat than a, than a good melody and a good harmony. It's like um, everybody has their own way, you know. And there's a lot of professionals that, like Shlomi said, like I start with the kick, works for him. For us, it doesn't work. We live on melodies, and we always want to try. It's the diff most difficult way, but it's the way we recommend because we believe if you stand out by being different, in the end that will make your career. That will give you like the energy to play what you want, to keep on doing when you get like shit in your face because you're gonna get a lot of shit in your face anyway. It's a hard scene, you know. But because you do what you love and you make what you love by something you truly believe in, you're going to stick to it. You have to find it. And by finding it, you have to experiment. You have to be bold. You have to be smart as, and if you read in, in, in a magazine or the, the rules is you have to soak up the technique, keep it here. But if you go in the studio, keep this open. Just go with it. Just find something. Get an old record. and got a, a chord out, make a new synth. And it's really funny, we're gonna, I think it's, it's time to, to go on now, and uh, it's also a, a workflow of us, and it's, it's just, I don't know how it happened, but uh, we sampled the track. I don't remember, Gary, you know the track you were sampling now? No, I don't even know it okay, either. Same. Okay, so it, it, it we will actually go with doesn't matter. It, does, it doesn't matter, so what, what we're doing, the show is a little trick inside, how we, how we work and how to find out our different drum parties or, or percussion or whatever we, we come up with. Yeah, cool. like in this in this case, the the example I want to show you now, I just took a, a track from the eighties. I had, I don't know why, I had it in my iTunes. And if you, for example, listen to the track in the beginning. Do you know it? Oh, I don't. Okay, but th th that's the thing, like, a lot of people would say, like, okay, you can do nothing with it, because there's no empty part that you could sample, like an a cappella or just a bass sound. But there actually is, and that's the way House started. And because Deep House is getting so, uh, it's, it's becoming the new style, you know? Think old school. Because then they had, like, limited gear, they had limited options, and they had to get their sounds from something. That's why old school always had soul. It was always fresh because there were no rules yet. Like in EDM, like, yeah, you have to make this scene go like, ah. and then it's like the Alesso scene. Fuck that. Make your own sound. And make your own sound by sampling. Make it by, if you're a whiz kid, go into the synthesizers, turn up your LFOs, envelopes, whatever. But if you want to get the gritty, the gritty vibe, then, for example, in this case, if you listen to this. There. This part. I like. I got it. Let me use this mouse, because I brought it specially from Holland. Got this part. You could also use this part. There's actually a kick in it, which, which would, which would uh, give it a bit more attack in the sound. In this case, I go for this one, because it's a little bit more cleaner, but it's still a higher in it, which gives presence in the high. Cut it up. So this is what you have left. There's also a conga in it. There's, there's everything in it. Just make a sampler of it. And that's actually a function in logic, which is which is really handy. You just like go to your uh, like second mouse click and say like make sample or say make region to new sampler. Yeah, so I think I mean what what we've seen is that you've got a really good ear, even whether you're watching Glee or listening to an '80s ballad yeah. for something exactly. that can give you a really good idea, and that triggers the open-mindedness that you're talking about in the sense that. You have to be able, you have to be open to the idea. Just, it's not always going to come. If you want to make deep house, it doesn't always come from a deep house sample pack. No. You have to think outside of the box and be open to everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. So, I mean, I think that it's a really good uh, example of 
the kind of creativity you can have just by uh, just going through loads of different techniques and logic. And like we were saying, a lot of people they don't do that, or they're not maybe not even that they don't want to do it. They're just not aware of it. It's not on their register. But well, you've been producing for a really long time. I mean, when you listen to tracks on Beatport, whatever now, do you hear something and you just think people need to? What's missing in a track that you don't like right now? From other producers? Yeah. Well, mostly it's it's hard that I miss. You know, it's it's a lot of the time it's just a copy. Mo mostly I hear a track and I hear like, okay, that's a copy of this hit. And then the next few months I hear that like 13 times, you know. And sometimes it goes through to the to the to the charts. But don't forget, like the music business is also a money machine. It gets through the charts because some artists are so pushed. It's, it's like shot down your throat. But if you're making like house music, if you're going for that real sound, if you love EDM, make EDM. If you love Deep House, make Deep House. Never do a concession in what you make, you know, and never copy what's already done. We think it's, it's really important that you, um, that you create your own music, or you also you dare to play it in, in a club. That's what we think. So don't make anything. Like, for example, for us, it doesn't work to make EDM or trance or, or some kind of way to go at trance because we won't play it in the club. We only make things we like and we can test so we can react. How do people work on it, yeah. react on it, so we can arrange it and make it, uh, make it for 100%. That's, that's the thing, that's how our workflow goes. And what, what, is the, what is that core thing that you see people reacting to all the time that you always think, got to make our track like that? If they're dancing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the thing uh, we always produce very uh, women friendly basically we like melodies like uh, if you're going to a club you have to remember like simple, simple but girls come there yeah. to be girls guys only come there for girls of course. so if the girls are dancing guys come to the dance floor the DJ is a success so make sexy music with balls, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Great advice. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I, I can't sugarcoat it, but it's true. Yeah. So, for like one final thing, then, apart from making sexy music, do you have like a mixing or production piece of advice you give, regardless of genre or even if you're not particularly a DJ and you're just sending out to labels? Like, is there something you've learned across, apart from sampling and just watching a lot of television? <laughs> uh, <laughs> any like? Piece of advice that you would give to a new producer, for example, in their like, like on the technical learn. side. Yeah, on the technical side. I what do you think? I think if if you're doubting about that point, send it to somebody else who has more experience with that, or a friend who was who was doing some producer classes or whatever, and let it, let's see his feedback. Or otherwise, if you stuck up in the mix, send it to a professional, pay him the amount he asks for, and then your mix is on balance and on the same level. That's a good point, actually, because like yeah. I know. Like there's so many producers and there's so many labels. They want to get the, the best out. And sometimes, because I've been in art as well uh, back in the days, and I heard tracks that were like, they're actually really good, but technically it doesn't work yet. It's going to cost too much, it's going to take too much time to make that track into something that sells. Because there's 30 others. So before you send it out, make sure it sounds good. It's like that the mastering should be almost okay, you know, because a lot of labels don't master anymore. Even if they promise you, like, yeah, we're going to master it, they still just throw it on B-port, you know. So make sure it sounds good as well it's for your own good, because in, in the club you're going to stand out. And make sure the balance is okay. Make sure that you have the, 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 the technical skills to mix it in balance. Not over compressed because you want to make it sound loud so it stands out. Make it sound good. That's the most important thing I could give you technically. Please put your hands together for amazing Gabriel and Castellano. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you.